Greetings AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are going to take a look at our second video that corresponds to topic 8.113. We're finding the arc length of a curve um, in function form. We're talking about a smooth curve in the xy plane, and uh, we kind of got the ball rolling a little bit with our last video. We introduced the general form of the uh, integral that will find these answers for us. And we looked at a, a more generic example. Well, now we're going to start to look at some more specific things. So let's take a look at arc length example number two. So we have an arc length with respect to x, apparently, by the title of the problem. And if we read a little bit more, it says, find the arc length of the graph of y equal x cubed over 6 plus 1 over 2x on the interval 1 half to 2 as shown in the right. And boom, we have this wonderful curve that we can kind of relate to. And, and our job is to figure out, well, how far is it between these two points along the curve? That's basically it. Now over here to the side, I want to write down what the formula is, right? We learned this from a previous video, but arc length is found by integrating from A to B of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of your function all squared with respect to x, of course. So that is our goal. Our goal is to assemble that expression, be able to integrate it, and have an answer. So let's go ahead and start. We're already given the function y, which is the same as f of x, so we could proceed very easily to take that derivative. And so upon doing that, we would end up with a 3 out in front. So we'll cancel the reduce, or say the 3 and the 6 to get 1 half. And then x lowers to the second power. And then to, inter to, uh, sorry, to differentiate 1 over 2x, you might temporarily let him dream about being 1 half x to the negative 1. And then the derivative of that would be minus 1 half x to the negative 2 power at which point I could put that x to the 2 into the denominator. Now, one of the things that's going to be maybe some of the, the most troublesome things is, is having to square this f prime. I don't, I don't know how better to put that. So in other words, we're going to have to work on that. And I have come to the realization that if we get a common denominator first, the squaring process is just a little bit more palatable. So let's see what I mean by that. If we get this common denominator of 2x squared, of course that means that we're going to have to multiply this first fraction by x squared over x squared, which is going to turn that current x squared into an x to the fourth. And then, of course, we still have the minus 1. All of this must be squared. And like I said, it's a little bit easier to pull off because we can expand the x to the 4th minus 1 times itself. And that would give us x to the 8th minus 2x to the 4th plus 1. And then if we square what's on the bottom, that's 4x to the 4th. We are set to go. We have our f prime squared. We can go ahead and write our arc length expression. So the arc length would be the integration. Boundaries go from 1 half to 2. And we are talking about the square root of 1 plus this pretty massive fraction that we just computed. Now in the previous video we discussed how sometimes performing the arc length by pencil and paper, solving some of these integrals can be a bit of a challenge. They're a little bit cumbersome, and I think you're, you're starting to see a good example of that. In order to proceed with this, I think we're going to have to consider adding these two pieces together. So we're going to write this with one single fraction. And so that means that our denominator is going to be 4x squared. So we're essentially finding yet another common denominator. And not so sure why I called that 4x squared, because it's not. It's 4x to the fourth, right? It's this original denominator. Good thing I caught that now. 
And then this 1 that's right here is going to have to be multiplied by a 4x to the 4th over a 4x to the 4th. Now, I don't really have enough room to write that, so hopefully you can kind of see it. And, and maybe if you don't, I could, I could maybe think of this as being 4x to the 4th over 4x to the 4th, which is essentially going to give me a common denominator. And now I can add these numerator parts. And basically, the x to the 8th doesn't combine with anything, but this 4x to the 4th and the minus 2x to the 4th creates a positive 2x to the 4th. And of course, the plus 1 stays as he is, all still under that square root. And, you know, let's be honest, what is making this integral challenging for us is not so much the presence of this fraction. Now, we could probably integrate this fraction. Um, splitting it up and working with it, but it's the fact that it's underneath the square root. It's the square root that causes the issue. Hmm, how often will you have a square root when you're taking the arc length? Oh, like maybe every time? <laughs> so that's where our focus is, trying to find ways to maybe lift away the square root. Maybe there's a way that we can remove it. Well, yeah, that's nice, wishful thinking, but the only way that we could get rid of the square root is if the things underneath the square root were perfect squares. Well, may maybe that's going to happen. I, I see that the denominator is a perfect square. Well, let's, let's give this a, some thought, right? If you know that that denominator is a perfect square, take its square root, it's now 2x squared and no longer under the square root. Okay, well, what about this numerator? Well, hmm, the only way that that could be a perfect square is if we got really lucky and it factored into a binomial times a binomial that was the same. So it's a binomial squared. I wonder what the chances of that happening are. Well, the chances are quite good because x to the 8th plus 2x to the 4th plus 1 will become x to the fourth plus one quantity squared. I'm not kidding, right? Expand that out, play around with it, and you'll see that you get that right back. Now, I know you might be watching this and thinking, well, how am I supposed to know that? Well, it's the only thing that's going to make this work for us, right? If you are told to find this answer and you're not allowed to use a calculator, it's got to factor into a perfect square. Otherwise, we can't lift away the radical. And that is what happens. The radical will go away and we end up with just x to the fourth plus one on top over our 2x squared on the bottom with respect to x. And that's a wonderful thing for us because we can now split this apart into two separate uh, fractions. The first of which is x to the fourth over 2x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify him. It's 2x squared, by the way. And then 1 over 2x squared, I could call that 1 half x to the negative 2, like that. And I'm going to go back and rethink this. x to the 4th over 2x squared is x squared over 2. Or how about we just say 1 half x squared? Sorry about the confusion there. But a 1 over a 2 puts the 2 in the bottom. Okay. So now we are ready to integrate. It took us a while to get to the stage where we could finally manage this. So I think the antiderivative is pretty, pretty tame. We have 1 half x cubed over 3, which would become 1 6 x cubed. And then if we integrate 1 half x to the negative 2, well, the 1 half is going to stay there integrate x to the negative 2, you would get x to the negative 1, which I could write like that, over negative 1, which just means the 1's going to come out in front. And then how about I center that one numerator like that? And my boundaries are still 2 and a half. And finally, finally, I'm at a stage where I could plug those in. The 2 plugged into the x, I would get 1 sixth times 2 to the th third, which is 8 over 6. Subtract. Let's plug 2 in here. I have 1 fourth. Subtract quantity. Plugging in a half, 
I get one sixth times one eighth, which is one forty eighth, built in minus. And if I plug a half in for this x, two times a half, of course, is one. One over one is one. And if I really want to simplify this all the way to its nice simplest form, let's say that this was a a dreadful multiple choice question that you had to match a choice with. Let's get a common denominator of what? 48, I believe, would be what we need. So 8 times 8 is 64. 1 fourth is the same as 12 48 1 48 can stay as 1 over 48. And then this minus minus is going to create a plus there. And then the 1 is just a 48 over 48. And if we add everything together, uh, for 64 minus 12, if I get that far, that's a 52. 52 minus one more is a 51. 51 and 48 is a 99 over 48. And I believe that you could cancel out a 3, if I'm not mistaken, and get 33 over 16. So it's about 2 and 1 16th, right? So that's how far it would be if you drove from this point to that point. It's a little bit more than two units. And it seems very logical when you look at the curve that that could be a conceivable arc length. And it is. So yet another really powerful tool in your arsenal uh, that involves integration techniques. We've got a few more videos in store for some other different variations, different kind of curveballs, different algebra, uh, different integration techniques that you might have to use to solve these by hand. And we certainly hope that you uh, stick around and check some of those videos out. Anyway, thanks for joining.